Today we're going back to the 70s, old school NASA. As we look at NASA, fresh off the back of their supposed successful moon landing, proud as you like NASA's predictions and goals for the future. Supposedly all to be done by the year 2000. The great thing is, as we look back at these predictions, these goals set by NASA to do by the year 2000, it becomes quite revealing as we look back. And of course, we all know why. Because the globe's scientifically impossible. Now, if what they really achieved with the moon landing was true, and of course we lived on a cannibal flying for a vacuum, then these zany goals that were set in the 70s by NASA would have long been fulfilled. But of course, it's just a charade and it exposes itself even more as time goes on. So let's have a look. Several years ago, a professor at Princeton named Gerard O'Neill conceived of the idea of putting large colonies in space, large artificial places where people could live and work. And what we did was to gather together a group of university people to look at the problem of how you would start this whole endeavor, of how you'd build the very first colony. This is Taurus. I love these old school fucking dark rooms from NASA, whether it be wonky drill bits in a dark room, or I don't know, chopper bicycle wheels in a dark room. Love it. The concept that has evolved from the work of these teams of scientists and engineers. They believe the huge space colony could be built before the year 2000. The so, according to NASA, they were believing or hoping to get Bicycle wheel space colonies in space by the year 2000, 21 years ago. What happened, guys? Space colony has the ability to provide a facility in space where human beings can conduct fruitful industry. The uh, amount of sunlight that is present in every square mile of space is enormous, and that provides enormous energy. One of the things that one can do is to build very large solar power stations which collect sunlight and to use that power either at the colony or to transmit it to Earth in the form of a microwave beam where it is collected on Earth and put into the ordinary electrical power system. The materials for the, for the colony and for the... Uh, yeah, I got a touch of the old uh, Starlink satellites about this power station largely come from the moon. It is much cheaper to haul the materials from the lunar surface than it is to bring things up from the earth because of the difference of gravities. And so it is the abundance of good material for building <laughs> aluminum structures and glass structures in space that come from the moon that make the idea work. Constructed almost entirely from ore mined on the moon, the Taurus colony would become home for 10,000 people. They would live, work, and be protected within a vast wheel more than a mile in diameter. The Earth-like environment would even simulate our gravity as the wheel revolves once each minute. The other materials like food and water are maintained locally within the colony. The, uh... I mean, this is a prime example of bullshit and imagination just going way overboard back in the day there and of course never ever have they caught up and been able to fake it convincingly enough anyway i mean the moon landing is is comedy gold but the predictions they were setting off the back of the moon landing of course assuming that the moon landing was true that everyone was going to be going back and forth there and mining the moon landing i mean it kind of exposes itself the fact they're supposed <laughs> given what they've only just achieved anyway. Yes, they supposedly had a, a space station 20 years ago, blah, blah, blah. 
We've already proven that to be a nonsensical charade. Yeah, no one doubts something goes up, but it's obviously not a gigantic space station 250 miles up going around a ball. That's clearly ridiculous and scientifically impossible. But they're looking at, like you, here, 21 years ago, we should have had space colonies a mile wide with fields and farms. Look at it. Initial supplies are brought up from Earth, and then eventually the colony becomes self-sustaining. We got the agricultural system designed so that we could actually feed 10,000 people in an area of just a little over 100 acres. This is very, very, very efficient. We did it by utilizing the sunlight that's available all the time in space, by optimizing the temperatures, by not having storms or things like that that damage crops. And we... Uh, increase the carbon dioxide levels a little bit so the plants grow a little faster. By playing all these tricks, we're able to generate this, this fairly efficient farm in our design. From dairy farms to manufacturing, the concept of living and working in space is a possibility with existing technology. That new space home, located a quarter of a million miles from Earth, would even have a far out address. There are places in space between the Earth and the Moon called the libration points. And these are places basically where the gravity from the moon and the gravity from the earth cancel each other out. And I've got to be honest, that's the first I've ever heard of that, a libration point. Okay, great. So they, these wheel colonies are supposed to be in the libration point. <laughs> oh dear. An object placed at that location remains there and doesn't drift off. They're called L4 and L5. There are two of them, one before the moon and one on the, on the, uh, on the trailing side of the moon. Space colonization, beneficial occupancy of possibly the last and highest frontier, the space beyond Earth. This is a prime example of time catching you out. As we look back here, it's the same old story, the same old bullshit, recycled time and time again. They've gone backwards, not forwards. Supposedly in the 70s, they thought by the millennium, we'd have space colonies halfway between the moon in these special zones. Oh dear. I'm not going to lie, I love those old school space documentaries. 60s, 70s, I love them. They're done so well. Even the darkroom stuff, is just, it's just got a rough edges to it that I just love. I mean, it's all fantasy, obviously. And of course, ages terribly. Why? Because it's all nonsense. Stories to get you to believe that you live on a ball, which of course is impossible anyway. And in this instance, old school NASA are debunking the globe and current future space, SpaceX, Blue Origin, even themselves, by just exposing what they hope to achieve based on what they should have supposedly achieved, i.e. the moon landing. Clearly here, based on their predictions, the fact they've never gone back to the moon, highlights that they never went there in the first place, and their claims... Now we're looking back, prove how ridiculous all of this is. If it was true, we'd all be going to weekend breaks to the moon by now if the moon landing was real. And of course, the people who made this assumed the moon landing was true, hence these bold claims. Old school NASA debunking the lot here through their predictions and their claims based off silly assumptions like the moon landing being true. Sorry. I love old school NASA, especially when they turn themselves over. Nice one.